Passion Harvest. <laughs> Hello, passionate listeners, and welcome to Passion Harvest. I have a wonderfully exciting guest today. Her name is Else Busco. Else is an international authority on the spiritual science of Martinus, the Danish, Danish philosopher, visionary, and mystic. Else has written eight books covering profound aspects of Martinus' worldview. Congratulations. The work of Martinus is the most complete revelation of spiritual insight ever disclosed to humankind. His work is spiritual nourishment for the soul with a scientific foundation for modern society. It appeals to our intellect and answers all the big questions in a logical and intelligent way. Else is also passionate, a passionate hiker and vegetarian. This is her story and this is her passion. Else, welcome to Passion Harvest. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very <laughs> excited about it. I'm so honored to have you on the show today. Um, I guess for those that don't, potentially don't know, who was Martinus? And I hope I'm saying it correctly, <laughs> Martinus. <laughs> Well, actually, in Danish, we say Martinus. So we Martinus. Stress, <laughs> yeah, we stress the I. The I. Sorry. Yes, uh, Martinus is unfortunately not very well known. And um, that's because, well, he was born in 1890. And um, he was born under very poor circumstances. He did not know his father. His mother was a lowly servant. And um, he grew up with his aunt and uncle who already had 11 children. Wow. <laughs> But in spite of that, they took him in. And at the time when, when Martinus lived with his aunt and uncle, there were only two other children living at home because in those days you sent your children out to work on, on neighboring farms at a very, very young age. So Martinus was, um, he, he was born, he was, his, his life as a child was very poor, but they were very loving and he had a good childhood. But of course there was no money for, uh, for for his education or anything. Mm. But it also became clear at a very early time that, that he was a very special child. He had a very close relationship to God and he was very much in opposition to what was taught in the churches. Like for instance, he was born outside wedlock and he was told mm. that the children who were born outside wedlock, they were eternally doomed and they would, went, they would go straight to hell and things like that. Yeah. And, and Tina said, it, I do not believe that a loving God doesn't love me because what, why wouldn't he? I mean, I haven't done anything anyway. And he always, every time when he was in doubt about something, he, um, he asked, what would Jesus do in a situation like this? And immediately he had the answer, like it came down to him. So, so he was a very special child. But um, as I said, there was no money for him to study anything. He wanted to become a teacher. And indeed, that was what he what he became, but not in the traditional sense. And uh, <clears throat> so he was trained as a dairyman. And he, he that was how he supported himself. He worked at dairies all over Denmark. And when he was uh, 30, he was already working at a dairy in Copenhagen. And uh, one day he he, there was somebody who, who lent him a book about meditation and, uh, and in the book it was, there was instructions about how to meditate. So he sat down in, a, in his chair. He lived in a, at a, at a, like, you know, a pension. He, mm -hmm. he didn't have any money ever. And uh, he sat down to meditate on the concept of God. And immediately he felt how he le left his physical body and was sort of elevated up to a, a, a level where um, like he f felt that he was in the presence of something very divine. And in the distance, he saw the figure of Christ coming towards him in the shape of a very famous statue by, by a famous Danish author, Torvaldsen, uh, a sculptor, Torvaldsen. And this figure of Christ went straight into him. It went straight into him and suddenly he could see the, the, the earth revolve from a position high above it. He could see mountains and valleys and seas and, 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 and rivers and lakes. And, and he could see the world revolving. And it was very, very, very peculiar. And at a certain point, it was too much for his consciousness. He, th he, th he thought, if this goes on for one more second, I, I can no, no longer be in this. So he, he jumped up from his chair and, um, and ended the, the, the meditation. 
and he was very surprised. The next day he did it again and, and again something happened. He suddenly found himself in the, in the golden sea of golden threads. And again, he felt that he was in the presence of something hugely divine. And again, when he came out of these two meditations, he felt that he, his consciousness had been expanded. He was no longer the same. He, he, now he could see, he could see into the spiritual level that li lies beyond and before the physical plane. And uh, he was very confused to begin with because he was now suddenly able to, he was, had, had, had attained, attained completely different, different faculties. So he asked somebody what, what it was, and um, this somebody who had studied a lot of theosophy and a lot of philosophy said, I think you have had a, a revelation and that you have achieved cosmic consciousness. And indeed wow. that was what he had. Yeah, he had achieved cosmic consciousness. And that means that, as I said, he was able to see into the spiritual world beyond the physical where everything has, it or has its origin. And um, based on, on this ability, he was able to write his, um, his, his work. And that, is, that comprises 10,000 pages. It's huge. I mean, it is so huge. He wrote from the time he had his uh, revelation when he was 30. It was in, in 1921. <laughs> uh, till his, his, his death in, in 1981. He, that was 60 years he wrote every day and obviously because he wrote so much and he was so incredibly diligent he was able to leave such a huge legacy and um and i mean his work reveals the 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 miss the, the, the solution to the mystery of life why are we here where are we coming from what's the meaning of life um <laughs> Where are we where are we going? And um, I mean, why is death is an illusion? Why do we reincarnate? How do we create our fate? And um, and are so much more. I mean, I, I cannot even be, begin to tell what what the enormity of the legacy he left. And um, when um, when I was in my forties. That's 25 years ago, exactly. I, I had been a searching soul for so many years that I was also considered myself an atheist mm. because I could not, I, 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 the, what re, the religions t had t tried to teach me did not resonate with me. I just thought that, that does, no, that's not for me. I, I cannot. I cannot really buy into it. So I just thought, well, okay, if that's how it is, then I'll just, I'll just be an atheist. So I was happy with that. But at, at the same time, I was a searching soul because I was always asking, what, what, what is all this about and why am I here and you know what? And then that was after we had moved to Spain. We moved to Spain in 1990. Uh, we, we had had our books stored at the friend's house because to begin with we moved down here we didn't have any money we couldn't buy a house so we we didn't have our books but at a certain point we've been able to buy a house that's the house i'm sitting in now congratulations <laughs> thank you and uh, and uh, and i opened these boxes of books and on top of one in one of these boxes i opened it and there it was martinez and i just intuitively knew that this is where my search ends I don't know, it was in pure intuition. I just knew that this is where my search ends. And I started reading, that was a, a book about Martinez. It was not one of his, his own books, because somebody had written about him. And I read it and I, I immediately started to buy his, his own work. And it took me about a year to, to read his uh, two main works, which is called The Book of Life, Leave It's Bow, in seven volumes, and his... Uh, second biggest uh, work is called the eternal world picture at the time it had six had it had four volumes now it has six and um when i had read it i was just i was overwhelmed by the magnitude of what i had found simply overwhelmed i think why is this not better known why how can this not be why doesn't everybody know about it 
So I, I decided that, that well, I know I didn't decide it. It was just that it was downloaded to me. I just had to write about it. And I thought I have to tell somebody about it. And that resulted in my first book, Death is an Illusion. Um, and uh, the subtitle is um, a logical explanation based on Martinez's worldview. And uh, I was so lucky to find a publisher in the United States that was in 2002. So that is now 18 years ago that the book was published. And um, I, I expected it to become an immediate bestseller, to be quite honest, because it had so many answers to so many questions. And it was just like an, a, a general introduction to Martinez's worldview, explaining who he was and, and what the main points in his world picture were. But of course that didn't happen. I'm not saying that it didn't sell because it did. But, and, and, and it has gradually dawned on me that this material is so new, so novel, so different and unique that you have to be a, a very searching soul to find it and to even like have um, interest in it. So I, I thought that everybody would be interested in it because it's so fantastic, yeah. but that was absolutely not, not that was not uh, happening. And I, and I later found out that uh, Martinez himself predicted that it would take 200 years from when he died until his work was generally known. So, I mean, and it makes sense because this is, this is so, the, the, the vibration of his work is so high and it's so um, different to the mainstream narrative that it, it, of course it takes a, a really open mind to, to accept, maybe not the best word, but to, but to, uh, to be connected to it too. Um, yes, precisely. Be interested precisely. in it. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, I sold it on. And um, after my first book, I wrote another one and then another one and then another one. And that's what I have been doing uh, ever since, ever since. So I, of course, now I'm, a, now I'm retired, but I only retired eight years ago. So I also wrote, um, some of my books were written while I was still working. But it, it didn't, I didn't find it hard or anything. It was just like, as soon as I sat down at the computer, the, it, was just, it, it just came to me. So I consider myself extremely privileged. And I don't know how, I think they made a mistake up there because I don't know how I could be like eligible for this amazing um, well, you obviously are, and you're doing an incredible job. <laughs> but just saying, no, no, no. But but obviously, yes, I'm doing it, and and like something that I can do. So so yes, definitely, and uh, it changed my life. Obviously, it changed my life from from being an atheist to realizing that we are alive in a living universe, and this universe is God. This this God that Martinus <laughs> describes is not the the angry and just mental God that I was, uh, that I learned about in school and in church. This is a, a cosmic universal uh, consciousness of, uh, of, of love, of insight, of intelligence, of everything. And we are tiny quanta of this God. We are alive in this universe and we are parts of, the, of it. And um, because we are tiny parts of this eternal universe, we are also eternal. And uh, that, of course, means that death is an illusion, which is the title of my One first book. One of your book. books. Yeah. And, um, and, and of course, I mean, once we, we understand really that we are eternal beings and that we cannot die, that obviously changes <laughs> our look at world, worldview. And, and I would like to explain how it is that we cannot die because it may, it's a hard people, concept to grasp. Yeah, because so many people, they think, well, she's, off her, her, she's just lost her mind or something. Oh, no, I'm not thinking that at all, but I'm saying... No, no, you know, no, no, we, I'm not saying you are. But <laughs> okay. you will. But it's actually not that difficult to explain because what we are, just have to realize is that we are not identical to this physical body. This physical body that we have right now is an instrument that our spirit 
or we can also call it our soul, and the, the soul is a concept that everybody has heard of. But what Martinez explains is that what is the spirit or the soul? I prefer the word spirit, I, I'm not sure why, but the spirit is a field of energy. And because what we have to realize is that there are two levels of existence, that we have the physical level and we have a physical body. The physical level is where we live and, and you know, the earth. But there's also a spiritual level. Before this, the physical world came into existence, there was a spiritual level. It's always spirit first. And this is interesting and this is actually easy to prove because when we look at every man-made thing on this planet, it could be a chair, it could be a table, a computer, a car, a house, everything was a thought before it became a physical, a physical manifestation. So it's always thought first. And what is thought? Is thought something that we can see and hold in our hand? No, it's not. It's also a spiritual entity. It's a spiritual thing or something existing in spiritual matter. And we just have to realize that we have a physical world that, that we can touch and see and feel and hear. And we have a spiritual world, which is invisible. We have an in invisible world before the physical world. And our spirit, who is who, that is who we really are. And our spirit is a field of energy. And this is also a really important point because that is who we really are. We are really a field of energy. And um, it is this field of energy that holds all the information about the person we have become. It holds our eye and our consciousness and all the memories we have um, accumulated over many, many lives. So we just have to look at it, like turn it all around and say, no, I'm not this physical body. Who I really am is my spirit. And it is the spirit that creates the body. And this is also easy to it's easy to demonstrate the, the truth in it because when we look at our physical body, and, and this is something that um, the medical science is also agrees upon, that all our physical matter is in a constant uh, process of renewal. Like the, the average um, age span of our, of our cells is three months. And after a year, practically all our physical matter has been, has been replaced. So how can that be? Incredible. Then where's the constant? Yes, where's the constant? And Martinez is very clear about this. He says after a year, we have a completely new body. And this is something that, that medical science will, uh, uh, will accept, yeah, will agree with. So what, what we do is that we reincarnate also within one life, we reincarnate into all the, the physical bodies that the, the, the bodies that are in a constant um, process of renewal. So we are not physically. If you take a fo if you have a photo of yourself when you were three, and one when you were twenty, and one when you were forty, you would be looking at three different bodies, three completely different physical bodies. But you're still the same person. So how can that be? That can be, be that can only be because the constant the is your spiritual body. The spiritual body, because it, it consists of energy or electromagnetic radiation, holds all the information about the person you are. And it is also this spirit that pulls out when the physical body is no longer um, working, when it is, has become ill or injured or, mm -hmm. or simply too old to, to work anymore, the spirit pulls out. And, and the spirit says, well, thank you for this um, time around and I'm out of here. So the spirit pulls out and it moves on to the, to the spiritual plane where it has a good long rest. And then at a certain point in time, it, um, it has, it, well, on the spiritual plane, you meet up with the people you have known before, the, those who have passed on before you and you have a great time up there. But at a certain point, you realize that it's time for you to reincarnate, to go back to the physical plane, because it's only on the physical plane that you can evolve. The spiritual plane is a plane of rest. That and was so my question. Why? You know yes. why? That was, so you answered my question. <laughs> I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going fast here. No, I, I, it's amazing. And all this information is from the, from the writings, all the information yes. you're providing us. 
Yes, because I've started this wow. for 25 years. It's become a part of who I am. You know, it, it's, I, cannot, I cannot look at the world in any other way than, than the way that Martinez presents it. it Incredible. It's, it's, so and, please uh, go on. I just, it, it's just yeah, answered yeah. the question why. Well, anyway. <laughs> so when, um, when then we have, a, when we have been on the spiritual plane for some time, then we have a meeting with our with the board of directors, we can call them all <laughs> with our spirit guides. We all have guardian angels, actually. We all have two or three guardian angels that are around us all the time. And that goes for every one of us. And they, are, they see to it that things are happening as they should and that we are kept out of harm's way to the extent that our karma allows. But that's a different story. Let's get back to the, to the board of directors. And they yes. say, well, it's time for you to go back to this physical plane. You have, uh, still have things to learn and you have a mission to, to do this, that and the, or the other. So down you go. And, um, and then you are, and this is the law of attraction. I don't know if you haven't heard about the law of attraction. It's been quite... Um, it's very I mean, popular. The, yeah. You know the secret and all that. Yes. The secret was what made the law of attraction really well known. But Martinez wrote about the law of attraction 50 years before the secret. So that's something that, that he was very much aware of. So, so he the agrees with that, that the yeah, idea absolutely, totally. your thoughts create attraction. your reality. Yeah, it, the law of attraction decrees that uh, uh, wavelengths or energies and civil, um, civil, um, civil wavelengths attract each other. Mm. So when you, when you are in your spirit body and you are waiting to reincarnate, you are emitting because a, a, a certain vibration, we are, everything is vibration and so is your spirit. So that's emitting a, a certain vibration. And that vibration will be picked up by a lovemaking couple on the physical plane. Uh, under normal circumstances, f people on the physical plane, their vibration is very low. It's mm. slow and it's low. But during the, the build-up, during sex and the build-up to orgasm, <clears throat> the vibration of, uh, of the physical beings it raises and raises and raises. And at a certain point, it reaches a point where it is high enough to attract a, a, a spiritual being or a discount. What an being. interesting... Con I mean, it sounds, it's, it's quite real but it's it's a, such a great way to explain it the, the just yeah. concept of it raising is. the vibration yes and then um the the two wavelengths have to be the, the two vibrations or the two energies have to be have a certain amount of similar wavelengths so uh, if that if there's enough similarity in their wavelengths the the the, the lovemaking couple will attract a spiritual being waiting to, to reincarnate and as soon as um, that uh, spirit joins the party, we can we can easily say it, say it like that. <laughs> Left the, the meeting. The fertilization <laughs> takes place. Mind you, the, uh, the egg and the sperm cell, they cannot do it alone. They don't have a clue. They need all the information that is stored in the energy field of the incoming soul to create a new body. The... the the egg and the sperm cell, they just deliver a tiny amount of physical matter to get the process started. So the incoming soul creates its new body in the womb of its mother, <clears throat> completely in its own favor. And that means it creates a body that fits all its talents, what, it, what its level of development or evolution, what it has come down to learn. And it also means that it continues its development from exactly the point where it, um, it stopped the last time it died. Because we are all on an eternal journey of evolution. At the point where we are today, we are evolving from being primitive, um, egoistic beings to becoming more evolved, more all-loving, more humanitarian, and, and this, this process, like we started like the, the wild predator in the jungle, and now we are on our way to becoming real human beings. And obviously this process takes thousands, if not millions of lives. It mm -hmm. takes a very long time. But for each life we live, we evolve, we become more moral, we become wiser, more insightful, we become more beautiful, we become more intelligent. So it's really moving forward all the time. There's only a forward moving movement we cannot go back we learn every time we live and so once we 
have created this body and we are, it's the spirit, the incoming soul that orchestrates the whole process of embryogenesis. It has all the information. The egg and the sperm cell, they don't, know, they don't have any information. And once it has uh, create, finished its creation in the womb, the, the child is born. And, um, and as I said, it continues its evolution from exactly the point where it left off the last time it died. And this is becoming more and more obvious because today we have those children, we call them wonder children. Some children, they can read already at the age of three without anybody having taught them. They have amazing talents. Some, some children can play the piano. At the, at the age of, of three or, or they start at when they're only two. They have amazing talents. And we have to understand that these talents that we have are results of things that we ourselves have practiced during former lives. And we take our talents with us into our next incarnation. So everything we are today is really a result of everything that we have learned over many, many incarnations on the physical plane. And, and that is like, we, 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 there's only a forward movement, as I said, and we are on our way to becoming real human beings. We're not there yet. We are still, to some extent, um, like Martinus says, that we are like the Sphinx, half animal, half human. But we're on our way, and... Um, and um, for each life, as I said, we live, we, we evolve, we become better, we learn, because this is just a long learning process. We can also look upon one physical life as a, as a school we go to. We go to earth school. And, um, and of course, there's a lot of things that we learn. We, we especially learn from our mistakes. So it's a very good idea to make many mistakes because that's how you really <laughs> that's a learn. Great way of looking at it. But so many people, they are so... Mm, they they reproach themselves when they make mistakes but really that's how we learn we should really really be happy with our mistakes because that's um they are our greatest teachers and i mean we are eternal beings we're on this eternal journey there's no hurry we can make all the mistakes we want and we will still in the end reach the real human kingdom where everybody will serve everybody where love will be, um, the universal love will be the rule of, of our societies and um, where there will be no war, no hunger, no uh, uh, inequality, where all the riches of the world will be equally distri distributed. And this will happen, according to Martinus, this will happen in two to three thousand years. So it's not that far away. Two really. to three thousand. Yeah, it's okay. not that far away. Not, he also not that said, far. <laughs> No, just a few more lifetimes. <laughs> no, but viewed in the in the age of, of the Earth, which has it's billions of years, it's a yes. really, really yes. old planet. This is just like it's it's in a quarter of an hour. You see, yeah. in 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 Earth terms, Martinus also says that in in five hundred years, the last war will be fought on this planet. So we are very much in a in a process of transformation transformation from primitive egoistic greedy jealous envious um, beings to becoming whole complete all loving beings and as i said all, obviously this takes time and and as i said we're not there yet but we are well on our way we're probably more on our way than many people realize of course Everybody has not come equally far, and that is very obvious because some people will go to great lengths to help other peoples when there are crises on in the world. They will offer, they will offer their own, their help. They will volunteer and they will do a lot of work selflessly. And on the other hand, we still have also people who are terrorists and who will kill indiscriminately mm -hmm. other people. And um, who can only think of themselves, who are extremely greedy and, and like they take all this money and, and think that they have a right to have um, take what they like can get money that they cannot even spend in 10 lifetimes. You know, it's, it's 
the, this equality on the planet right, right now is, is severe because 2% of the world's population owns 50% of the riches because obviously that is not going to last because <laughs> everything seeks, seeks a point of balance. But we will also see that happening over the next um, 500 years probably. And then it will begin to go really fast because then we will, as, as more and more people, for each life we live, we evolve. And obviously, the the thing that um, the thing that mm, uh, rules our fate is the law of karma, and the law of karma decrees that you reap as you sow. So when you go out and sow killing, for instance, let I, let's let me say that I killed somebody, um, which you haven't, by the way. No, not not in this life. I have <laughs> def this definitely have in former life. That's, that's we all have. I mean, yes. there's no way about it. Then I will be killed in a later life. I will be killed either in the same life or in a later life because that is how how karma works. Um, every action that you perform is like a small amount of energy that you send that you send out into the universe. And because there's no straight line in the universe, this energy will perform a circular movement. And it will return to its place of, of, of origin. It can return in the same life as it was sent out, but it can also re return in a later life. And let me say, let's say that, that I kill somebody and this um, killing energy now comes back to me. And that means that I will also, that I will then be killed. I will be killed and, um, and move on to the, to the spiritual plane. And then I have to reincarnate again, obviously. But this act of being killed will affect me very much and it will, of course, imply a lot of suffering for me. And it is actually via our own sufferings that we learn compassion. So when we, when we, make, when we do acts that are unkind or mm, harming others, hurting others, this will come back to us as our fate. And that means that um, we will have to live through what we um <laughs> what we did to others to others yeah yes so when 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 we harm somebody when we hurt somebody when we shout at people um this will come back to you, us as our own fate and that could also and, be thoughts as well okay yes absolutely so so what we have to understand is that we are on a in a constant process of of improvement <laughs> because what we do we get back what we get back teaches us a lesson a very important lesson and um, and then eventually we will stop doing that and we will like get our get our acts together and we will realize that it pays to be good I mean the better we are the kinder we are the more compassionate and uh, and loving and all loving we are then the the, that is also something that we will get back. I mean, whatever we send out, we will get back. So when we go, do good deeds, when we help others, when we are, are kind and, and, um, and all loving, then that will also come back to us as our fate. And in that way, we improve for each life we live. So, I mean, it's, it's important. And Martinez actually says that coming to grips with the law of karma is the greatest challenge um, facing humankind today. And why is it? Because today, the one life theory is um, still predominant and most people think that they only live once. And they will grab all the riches that they can. They will be extremely selfish. Mm. They will be um, only interested in, well, not only, but a lot of young people are so inter interested in having fun and going well, out. Well, they're very get, detached as you said yes. from the spiritual very absolutely. Absolutely. in every way yeah in every way but of course i suppose that's just a phase and as they grow older they will probably wake up to this uh, reality that they are more than their physical body and that whatever they do has consequences everything we do has consequences and we all have a cosmic responsibility so when, when we realize that this is not the only life we live and that what we do will affect our life, a future life, because things that we, as I said, things that we do in this life will affect, can affect our fate in a later life. 
or even this life as well yes of course also this life but it may not there may not be time for the for the energy to come back yes. in this life so so it, it could also be in a later life and i think that is such a sobering thought and it certainly um made me change my <laughs> my behavior because like you don't want to you don't be want to be at the receiving end of some of the things that you did before you realized that there was something called the law of karma and um and and i think once you realize that whatever you do you get back and what you do to others you eventually do to yourself then that will make you pause and think well i'd better not go around sowing a lot of actions that i would not be happy to reap in a later life or in the, in this life and um and that's when you can really start to um, change your life and change it for the better and um and yes so i it, it's I think it's it's fantastic to know how this works because so many people, most people really, they have no idea how they create their fate. They have no idea why they are suffering. They have no idea why some people are living happy lives and other people are living unhappy lives. And I mean, if you look at the one life theory, seen in the one life theory, life is completely unjust. Yes, it's completely it is. unloving and it is completely illogical because you have one person living a wonderful life born to 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 kind and loving parents mm. has a fantastic education gets a great job um lives in wonderful house goes to on holiday to wonderful places and lives to a ripe old age and then you have another person born in syria has to flee from from war at the age of i don't know what two three four in the it's arms of your, your parents yes and and you and you have a a terrible terrible life um in de, in deprivation and hunger and and cold and nothing you nothing um, sensible to do yes and then these two lives are the only lives that these people get one life is fantastic wonderful successful fantastic and the other life is miserable and it, we can go in even further and say there's a child in africa that dies at the age of two that's the only life that they live only life here only life here and only life here makes no sense at all no, no sense. It, it doesn't it doesn't and and that's why pe people say well uh, the, the 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 ways of the lord are inscrutable or something like that mm -hmm. and we don't know what's going on but we do. I mean, as soon as we get the right perspective on, on our ex existence and realize that we do not only live one life, that this is just one, sim one single note in, in a song that the soul is singing, then it makes sense. And Martinus is very clear about this. When you look at life in the right perspective, perspective spanning many, many lifetimes, all fates are leveled out it's not as if some people are more lucky than others it's just mm. that they are at a different place in their eternal journey and they are now experiencing a happy life and those who are experiencing a sad and miserable life are at another place in their journey but they will also in a later life experience a happy life and as i said over a time all fates are level out it's not as if some people have to suffer more than others no we all just get the exact necessary amount of suffering and not enough to make us into compassionate and all loving human beings so i mean once we get this perspective it all makes sense suddenly it becomes logical loving and just there's no injustice in the universe it is a completely just place because all everything you 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 sow is what you will reap can there be a higher justice than that and it's only you who are responsible for your fate there's nobody to blame you cannot blame your mother or your husband or your teacher or whoever you can only blame yourself and i'm not saying that yet you sowed an unhappy fate for yourself knowingly you did it by default you did it out of ignorance and that is and that is the reason why it is so important 
to talk about this law of karma and to because how can people create a happy fate for themselves a happy light for themselves if they don't know how the how fate is created but it is so simple because you reap as you sow that's that's simply how it is and once we get the perspective of not what just one life but several lives it's it's easy to see how we create our fate and um so so i think that is um that is so important. And Martina says it's the greatest challenge facing humankind today. It's very hard. So, it, it, it is a challenge. <laughs> it definitely yes. is to it say, is a challenge. you know, I grew up in a slum, but, you know, I have to wait till my next life. And we live in such a world where we want everything now. Yes. And that's why the, it's important to have the, 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 the larger perspective. And it's also, I mean, of course, we have all been through the same. I mean, if, if I can sit here today and, and talk about this, it's because I have lived through so much suffering. Because actually, Matthias says that it is the suffering that opens our, our, eventually opens our interest for this higher truth, really. So, I mean, it's, it's I mean, it's, we, I mean, I know it's not, it's not fun to know. It's not fun to talk about that, that we have to suffer. But it is actually in that way that God creates real, finished human beings. That is through our suffering. And I mean, the question of why does suffering exist has been with humanity forever. And, and uh, nobody has been able to answer it better than Martinez that that we have to have darkness because there's light there has to be darkness because we have to have contrast in the universe so we as we move through eternity we move in cycles round and round and round it go and, and then upwards in spirals and in each cyclic movement we have light and we have darkness and we have light in the spiritual world um in the divine world where we are one with the with the God's primary consciousness, and we have darkness in the animal kingdom. And that is where we are today. We are, ex we are on our way to exit the animal kingdom. We are close to the exit point of the animal kingdom, and we are getting closer for each life we live, we live to the real human kingdom. And as I said, we will reach it. The, the mo most evolved will probably reach it in only four to five incarnations will we begin to get cosmic glimpses and then they will get cosmic consciousness as martinus did martinus reincarnated from the real human kingdom as did jesus they were finished human beings and they had agreed to come down to this earth plane to teach uh, humanity oh. yeah th this it was no, no coincidence at all uh, Jesus obviously uh, reincarnated here 2,000 years ago, and um, so Martinus and is no longer in a physical form. No, no, he okay. died in 1981. But he hasn't. He, was, he won't he was, reincarnate. No, no, okay. he, no. He was very clear about that because he said um, that the Earth, the people, the, the the population of the Earth needed his work to be able to evolve beyond the um, the obvious they needed answers to the to the big questions and the and pain he, and suffering was, and yeah exactly and he was he was it was his mission to come and explain that um and but he also said that this is the last instruction that the people on the earth will will get from the from the divine level because as you are you yourselves the humans are evolving in in a relatively short time as i said three to four to five incarnations you will get there yourself the, the more evolved humans will will reach the point where they ex themselves reach uh, cosmic get cosmic consciousness cosmic and then consciousness. we don't need visitors from the higher realms then we can teach ourselves so so this is um, <laughs> this is how it is going and martinez as well we view is also a deeply optimistic one because I mean so many people think that no we won't be alive in in, in 100 years mm. we will all have died and the earth will have like, the world will down. end and 
the world will end and it is all, all, all horrible and look at, at the mess the earth is in at now, right now. But actually, no, we have an absolutely beautiful, fantastic future in head, ahead of us. And why? And this is really easy to explain because the more we evolve for each life we live, the more experiences we gather, we accumulate wisdom, we become wiser, we become more intelligent, we become um, more all loving. So it can only move forward. And, and I mean, all this, all this suffering that we go through only has one end, and that is to make us into real, all loving humans. And as I said, we're on our way, and for each life we live, we move forward. We move one step forward towards that goal. And um, right now, it's true, there's a lot of, of um, mess. We, we can call it mess, but it's not and really And suffering. A, and suffering. It's not really a mess. It is karma that is being reaped. Karma that these people, that all of us have sown in previous lives, that we are now reaping. And all this reaping of, of, of karma is of course defining our, our societies. And uh, I mean, if you go to war and you kill others, then that will become your fate and you will be killed in war. So we cannot create peace with war. What if we want to have peace, we must sow peace. We cannot sow war and reap peace, obviously not. So. We are, we are learning all this as we live life after life after life. And as I said, there's no hurry. We're eternal beings. We cannot get the journey wrong. I mean, this is an amazing universe we're living in. And I mean, you cannot help becoming a, a super optimist and, and super happy once you get this world picture because it all makes sense. And I mean, I have only scratched the surface of what Martinus reveals. And, and it so makes sense. It appeals to your intellect like nothing, nothing you have ever read before. Like when Jesus lived, that was the, the people that were his followers were not very evolved and they did not have a very high level of intellectual maturity. Consciousness. So he, Consciousness. So he, could, he could only appeal to their feelings. And like he said, like, don't do this because this is a sin. In the cosmic sense, you cannot sin, but Jesus used that term because something that people could relate to. And he, his work appealed to people's feelings. But he also said to his disciples, I have many more things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. But the Father or something will send, but the, the Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit of truth that the Father will send in my name will reveal the whole truth to you, something like that. And, um, and that is, of course, uh, what, 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 what um, Martinus. Jesus, Jesus has referred to as the, the second coming. And people are expecting uh, Jesus himself to come back. But the second coming has actually already taken place in the work of Martinus. And that is why Martinus, when he had his vision, he saw Jesus come, talk, come walking behind him and walked mm -hmm. into him. And that was meant that he had to continue the mission of Christ and, and come, come with this, all, that, all the many things that Jesus could not explain when he was alive because people's intellects had not evolved sufficiently to be able to, to, be able to grasp um, the truth when it was told in a way that would appeal to the intellect. So Martinez's work is not something that appeals to our feelings. It is not um, like you, 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 it only appeals to our intellects. And, um, and that is, that was actually meant to be, it was meant to be that this is something that will teach you things. Once you have reached the point where you actually have an intellect that is high enough to grasp this, that this is then explained, like, because Martinus tells us a lot about energies, basic energies, uh, law of attraction, law of karma, and, and, um, and things that would not be, that people would not be able to understand 2,000 years ago. So this sort of rounds off the mission of Christ. And I know when, when I say this and the people say, you're out of your mind and... and it's a and, big and, statement. And it's a big statement. And I totally agree. And I totally agree. And I can only say one thing read it. If you have read Martinez's complete work, 
then you are not in doubt. There's, there's no, nothing else to say about it, read it. Because it's not as if Martinez goes around flaunting and saying, hey, hey, I'm, I'm the reincarnation. No, he, he only was it when he was in his 70s, he had a huge impulse from the divine level and that's, that told him that his complete work was to be denominated with the title, the Third Testament. And that is what it is, the, the Third Testament. And that is a continuation of the New Testament. But it, I mean, it, once you have read it, there's no discussion about it. It is. It simply is. And in my own humble way, I've, I've tried to, because the Martinez's work was all written in Danish and yes. it has not, I mean, it's huge. I mean, 10,000 pages are very. And you've read the 10,000 pages multiple yes. times. Oh yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and um, I mean, and it, it, <laughs> It's in the process of being translated into more than 20 languages. I myself am also translating it into Spanish because I have made it in Spanish. But it takes time and it's, it's a very, it's not an easy thing to do because you, you have to, not only have, do you have to, have to be a translator, but you also have to have a very profound understanding of Martinez's work in order to be able to translate it in the right way. Right. So. <clears throat> It's still in the process of being, uh, of being translated and a lot has been translated, don't get me wrong. Um, but in its totality, it can only be read in, uh, read in Danish today. So, I mean, I have an enormous uh, advantage of, being born in, of having been born in Denmark. And, um, and so, where, where, where was I actually? Well, I would just like to say, I think you're an incredible ambassador for his work. You're so passionate about it. So, <laughs> and yeah, by the way, no your book, all your books are in English for everyone that's all the audience. Yes, I have written eight books in English and uh, I would say some of the six of them have come out in Danish and uh, okay. one in German, one in Spanish. But what, what I'm trying to do with my, my books is to um, take aspects of Martinez's wor uh, work and explain them like an introduction, mm. like it's secondary literature, obviously. And my only aim with this is to make people interested in reading his own his own words because that's where the gold is it, the, the, the my works are only like introductions but um because his work is so huge there's so much to write about and um i have a <laughs> i have a very good friend called maria magmayan and we met via my via my first book um, this one, Death is an Illusion. I love the cover, cover and that's Martin. It's, it's a symbol yeah, on the front. Is, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's one of his symbols. And um, she went to the chiropractor one day and uh, they were discussing profound things. And the chiropractor is a friend of mine. And he said, you must read this book. And she went straight home and bought it. And a week later, she contacted me. And it, it turned out we only lived uh, 30 kilometers apart here in, in Spain. <laughs> So, so we became uh, we became great friends, and we started we decided that we would write a series of books together. And we have now just published the second book in this. Uh, this is it. Uh, it's called Fate and Karma in a Nutshell. Mm -hmm. And the first book is here. It's called Reincarnation in a Nutshell. And and we started uh, writing this. It's, it's, we we call it the the Spiritual Nutshell series. Because we, we would take like single aspects out of Martinez's work and explain them like reincarnation. It's such a fundamental concept that you yes. cannot understand life at all if you don't realize that we don't live one, only that we only live live mm -hmm. once. I mean, you cannot understand your fate seen in a one life perspective. You cannot understand anything. So the first thing is to realize that you reincarnate. This is not the only life we live. We live a whole series of lives and this, this book explains how does reincarnation take place take place what is it that reincarnates why are we not identical to our physical body it explains what what our energy body is and then it also uh, presents a lot of the evidence because like for instance one of the most important uh, evidences today would be the near-death experience so many people 
and mm -hmm. the, the numbers are growing every day because you get better and better at, at, at reviving people who have been who are dead so many people experience being outside their body having their physical body having died and experiencing a world of beauty experiencing fantastic amazing things and i mean if you if you want to dig into the near-death experience uh, material there are hundreds of books and they are extremely interesting uh, read read readings i mean they are so interesting to read and they all unanimously say the same you are not identical to your physical body you are exactly the same without a physical body that you are with a physical body you feel the same you can still see and hear and watch and everything and um and and i mean until we we grasp it really get this we cannot understand life. We do not understand where we are coming from, what we are doing here, where we're going. So reincarnation is absolutely fundamental. So that was our first book. And then uh, Fate and Karma in a nutshell, because as I said- The law of karma. The law of karma and getting to grips with the workings of the law of karma is the greatest challenge that's facing us today. And it is a prerequisite for getting the world out of the mess that it is in today, because how can we create a happy world if we still if so many of us still run around um, behaving like very primitive beings like killing others and let me just say there that martinez points out that the, the, the of course thou shall not kill we have all heard that that's the fifth the commandment but funnily enough the fifth commandment does not specify the, this not killing to only other humans it as actually does not specify it at all it just says thou shall not kill mm -hmm. and that means that you should not kill any living being that includes animals the animals that we eat so we really really must stop this horrible horrible slaughter of animals and the way that they are they are Hor horrifically killed hor horrifically bred in 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 horrible conditions and and uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely so primitive a thing to do. And it's completely unnecessary, completely unnecessary. It's not a vital condition no. for us to eat meat. Absolutely not. So, and it, will, and it will create dark killing karma for ourselves. I mean, there's no difference in the karma from killing a pig or killing an animal, um, a, a human. Uh, that is simply how it is and also the vibration of meat is too high it's very high for our digestive system to to digest so it puts a huge strain on our digestive system and that is this huge strain this overwork that we put our digestion on on every day it undermines the health of our body so once we stop eating meat we will become so much healthier so much um, lighter, vibrant, more vibrant and uh, and alive and uh, and and positive and 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 um, you know optimistic. I mean, really, eating meat is so primitive, and it is not. I mean, eating meat is fine for tigers and crocodiles and lions and hyenas, and to the extent that we stand above these animals in our evolution meat is unsuitable for us so i mean think, i think this is something very very important also to realize that this has to stop and um i mean i, I think there was a very interesting video by some man from australia i'm sorry i can't remember his name who he talked about this ahimsa that we really should not kill it was very very impressive I and i couldn't agree more it is simply something that we must stop and, and the sooner the better. Yes, and, and again, this goes back to your level of evolution and consciousness. People will stop when they, they feel the same as you. I'm interested yes. also your thoughts on dairy when you talk about vegetarianism. What do you think about dairy? It should definitely be avoided because, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love cheese. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been a vegetarian now for twenty years. So have I. And, uh, yes, and uh, but um, during most of those twenty years, I still ate cheese and mm -hmm. eggs for that matter, because it made it so much easier 
and uh, because but but what is really and i don't know what because it, i was simply not evolved enough to see the uh, the enormous pain that the cow went through when its calf was taken from it mm. and i suddenly and suddenly i could see it and i thought it was so horrible and i mean not only that we rape the cow with an arm and then we take its baby away from it as soon as it has been born and we kill it and then we milk the poor cow to death i mean it is so horrible horrible really and it's it's not a it's not necessary dairy is not good for you you were not meant to eat um, the, the milk is for the calf, right? Mm. It's not for humans. It's actually not designed for our, our bodies either. Yeah, no. So I'm 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 totally uh, against it. But I also re recognize then that if you want, when once you want, you you decide that you want to become a vegetarian, uh, it could, for in a certain for a certain in a certain pr process, it can be helpful to maybe have a bit of cheese in between and, and an egg uh, because it eases the, um, the process. But, uh, but definitely no. No, I mean, a plant-based di plant diet is what is the right diet for us at our present level of, of evolution. There's absolutely no doubt about it. It is the most uh, he is healthiest for our bodies. And today, this has been confirmed in so many studies, like we have the China study, we have Michael Greger's book, How Not to Die. <laughs> I love that book. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he is, they are all like advocating and explaining the benefits of a, of a vegan or plant-based diet. So, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt. I mean, a plant-based diet can turn all the big killers in the States around in less than a month. It sounds as if I'm exaggerating, but there is, there's evidence to prove it. Yes, it is amazing is. how it can turn your, your health around. I Absolutely. suppose you have experienced the same. Well, I, I, it's just life for me now. I don't, I don't think otherwise. No, no, exactly. Exactly. Um, but um, I mean, and, and we are being helped because the climate ch ch uh, change <laughs> um, is, um, well, the climate change, we, I can just maybe say that the Earth, sure. is a living being, the Earth is a living being and it, we do not control the climate. But those who think that we are living on a dead lump of matter, they think that we control it, but we don't. The Earth controls it. And Martinez actually says that, uh, that um, the, the climate is going to improve. And that is that the earth decides, has decided that, that it should be warmer for its micro beings who are us, that they should have an, a nicer climate to live in. And, and that's all it is. I mean, but because that's so many people who do not have the bigger picture, they think that we r run the climate. Uh, they, they ha have now, become aware that um, that uh, the production of meat like the cows and the emissions of the cows they are very very bad for the climate and they really contribute to, to higher levels of, of carbon higher carbon co2, CO2. and <laughs> and, uh, and that has made especially in Denmark where I live but also here in Spain where I lived sorry um, realize that we must stop eating so much meat. And now, for instance, here in Spain, in the supermarkets, all big supermarkets have a vacant steaks. They have oh, really? vacant this, great. that, and the others. It's really, really gone so fast the last five years. And the Hasn't same it? Day. Yes, it has really has. And I think climate change is, is one of the reasons. So, so, I mean, there's so much, this, this is such an interesting time to be alive because look at how things are changing. Look at how our our vision has is expanding and and um, how we are awakening we are awakening to a whole new way of envisaging the world, like uh, realizing that we do not live only live once and that our our cosmic responsibility. It's a simple concept, but you know it, it's sometimes I guess hard to grasp. Absolutely, I'm not saying it's easy. 
But I mean, and, and the good news is that as we evolve and as we live life after life, this will become second nature to us. It's not as if it's something that we will, we will struggle with. It will, as we, as we evolve and, and reap more and more experiences of whatever nature they may have, this will, will become obvious to us. It will become lie, logic. Yeah, of course, this is how it is. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's so interesting. It's so interesting to see what, what is going on today. And um, also this coronavirus that is now everywhere. There's what a lot of there? fear around that. Yes, exactly. What is it? And um, I'm, I, I can't, obviously I cannot say, but it is definitely karma because everything is karma. Everything that happens to us is karma. Mm. So karma for, from killing, we have done karma from lack of respect for others, whatever it can be. I, I'm not sure what, what kind of karma uh, the coronavirus is, but it's definitely sure. karma. Well, it's definitely and, affected uh, it's the definitely, whole world. Yeah, and if there's a lesson in it, obviously a huge lesson in it, and we have to see what this lesson is. And and but I can also see that the 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 the, the positive effects of this coronavirus is that people are like becoming more aware of helping each other, becoming more aware of having responsibility for the well-being of their neighbor, and that is a very positive outcome. So so I think, I mean, it is. One thing is absolutely certain that the, the greed and the egoism and the, the I want everything for myself, that is going to die and it will die quickly. Because we, at a certain point, we will realize that we are all one. We are one with this fantastic universe. We are tiny, tiny bits, parts of God's body. And in that respect, we are one with this universe. And I cannot be happy when my neighbor is not happy and when I look at all the misery in Syria and wherever in Africa, it, it, it affects me. And of course, that is, that is also a, a, a part of our journey to, to become aware of other people's suffering and to try to alleviate it to the extent that we can. And, um, and I mean, this, the way that, that the American president behaves like, such a, a greedy person that only thinks about himself. I'm sorry, but, but he's such a good example, you know. Of, <laughs> <laughs> he, he makes himself an easy target, unfortunately. Yes, he does. He does. But he's also a very good example of a, a, a type of consciousness and a type of person that will not last long for the I mean, future obviously he is also on a journey we are all on on this journey of evolution and and in four or five lifetimes he will be a completely different person but i i'm, I'm not really trying to say anything bad about him but he's, it was just that he's a good example and so are all the other oligarchs that think that they think they only live once and they have to scrape as many riches together in this one lifetime as they can so that they can fly around in their private jets and, 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 and go to parties and, and have hundreds of mistresses and, and, and thousands of 50 cars and whatever and all that. But, but it, it is, a, it is a, an example of a consciousness, of a consciousness level that is disappearing. It will mm. disappear over the next, uh, it many well what what will i can i say five to five to ten incarnations because it is not sustainable it, it cannot go on like that and because you are so egoistic guess what you are sowing you go you're going to you're sowing a, a karma a fate that you will not like when it reaches you when it comes back to you that's how it is what I mean, what an I'm just thinking, what an incredible ambassador because I, you know, at the audience that that potentially is listening to this or watching it may stop and you know you've really put forward some profound and quite simple and they've been across through time, but some some points that are just so fundamental to our existence and it might you know people might stop and think and say, wow, you know, how am I living my life and what am I doing and what am I doing for myself and for the global for yeah. my neighbor, but for globally. 
And what yeah, can yeah. I do? And how can I change my karma? Because someone might think, yeah. oh, no, I, I don't want that for the next life. I'd like Precisely. to evolve. Precisely. And that's the whole point, isn't it? And um, I mean, I, I have a website called newspiritualscience.com. Martinus called his work Spiritual Science. And my website is called newspiritualscience.com. And there you can uh, see my, my books and you can see my blog. I have written more than 60 blog posts about aspects of Martinez's work. It's all about Martinez. There's a small introduction to who Martinez was and, uh, and there's a lot of free material, um, you know, podcasts and videos and audios. And yeah, so I, I definitely recommend anyone that's listening or watching, please go and have a look and I'll put the Elsa's details in the show notes. So all you have to do is click on the link. Yeah. Thank you so much. Just to make it easier. I don't know if you have, is there anything you, you want more than you want us to talk about? Well, I'd, I had so many things to cover, but in the essence of time, <laughs> you've done such yeah. an incredible job. I just can't wait to go and read some of your books because I'm fascinated you and you're so, you know, you're such a passionate ambassador. So I just it, want to it, say it thank really you. Is, it really is my passion. What can I say? It's and obvious. Uh, <clears throat> you, you're glowing. Yeah. It changed my life. It completely changed my life. And I'm so grateful, so eternally grateful that I found it or that it found me. I mean, it is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's like living in, it's a cornucopia of spiritual insight. Oh, I love that and, word. Yeah. So, <laughs> I guess my so, only other question would be, and since this is a show about passion or freedom, if someone which is probably many people or the majority of people in the world, if someone's not happy with their life and wants to change their karma and wants to live a passionate life, a life looking at an incredible person like you that is happy and grateful, how, what are the steps you would recommend that they take to change <laughs> their life around? So what you would like to weep. Okay. That is one, that is one thing. I mean, if you're not happy with your life, so a different kind of seed. Mm. I mean, if you don't like the carrots that you sowed, then sow a different kind of seed. Then sow turnips or something. Like, don't expect to get a different outcome if you keep sowing the same thing. Point one. Point two, start living in gratitude. Because once you start living in gratitude, and you don't have to have huge, big things to be grateful for. Be grateful for a cup of coffee or a smile from a passerby or a roof over your head, a good bed to sleep in, whatever you can, small things you can find to be grateful for. Once you start living in gratitude, and you can, of course, build it up gradually, the law of attraction will bring you more things to be grateful for because the law of attraction, gratitude is an energy. And the law of attraction says that like energies attract each other. So you will attract more energies from the universe that will give you more things to be grateful for. So the easiest, cheapest way to change your life is to start living in gratitude. Because once you do that, your whole consciousness and your whole attraction starts to change. And you will attract better things. Because if you only look at what is and you only think of what is all you can attract is more of what is mm. so you have to start like visualizing things you want and and things to be grateful for and then you will attract that and if at the same time you s make sure that you only sow what you would like to reap so help if you see somebody that needs your help go and help that person help 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 wherever you can and, and be, be an instrument in, um, in, 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 in making love. life easier for others and, and love, then that you will turn your life around because then you are sowing something that you would really, really like to reap. I mean, if you shout at somebody and are angry and pissed off and, uh, and, um, and you hate people, then you are sowing that. Is that what you want? Is that what you want to reap? Do you want to reap killing because you eat meat? Probably not. But you, have, you don't know about it. You haven't thought about it. And you go on eating your steak because you think you need that. Ooh, change that. Stop it. Because that, I mean, meat eating is the worst thing you can do for your own karma and your fate. 
it will only create darkness for your fate. You will be killed in the traffic accident or you will be ill. You will become ill with, with whatever, cancer, heart disease, arthritis, whatever, because the, the, the digestion of the meat puts such a strain on your body. So stop that. That's the first thing to do. Stop eating meat. Live in gratitude and serve what you want to reap. That was amazing. 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 <laughs> Else, thank you so much for that message and all your messages today and be for being on Passion Harvest. I'm so honored to have you on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure. Oh, it was, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.